Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am discussing regarding action potential in a cardiac muscle. Again, a little bit difficult topic for the undergraduates to understand. So I have made the concepts very clear. So watch the video till the end so as to understand the concepts of how an action potential is generated in a cardiac muscle. Okay. So this is how action potential looks like in a cardiac muscle. Action potential in a cardiac muscle is entirely different from the action potential which is produced either in a skeletal muscle or in a nerve fiber. Okay. So what are the different components of the action potential? So before going into the components of the action potentials, we have to understand as to what is the resting membrane potential in a cardiac muscle. So this line what we are seeing, this is the one which is suggestive of the resting membrane potential and the resting membrane potential in a cardiac muscle is minus 90 millivolts. And I hope all of you understand these terms, what is called as depolarization as well as repolarization. Okay. What is the meaning of depolarization? Depolarization is a word which makes us understand that inside of the membrane has become more positive. And repolarization is the one which makes us understand that the inside of the membrane has become more negative. So when does inside of a membrane becomes more positive? When positive ions are going to enter inside. So this is called as influx. Okay. And when does the membrane becomes repolarized or more negative? When positive ions are moving outside. That is what is called as efflux. Okay. Or when negative ions from outside are entering inside and that is called as influx. So, this is the basics regarding the resting membrane potential, depolarization and repolarization. So, now let us see what are all the things. So, this is the resting membrane potential as I have already told resting membrane potential is minus 90 millivolts and this is the phase 0. Okay. So, we are having four phases. One is phase 0 and then one is phase 1. Then we have the phase 2 and then we have the phase 3. Phase 4 is nothing but the resting membrane potential. So, what is phase 0 here? Phase 0 is nothing but the phase of rapid depolarization. Okay, it is nothing but the phase of rapid depolarization. Then, what is phase 1? Phase 1, as we are seeing, there is a little bit dip, it is going towards the negative. So, that is called as initial rapid repolarization and this repolarization does not last longer, it is only for a very short duration of the time. And then we have this phase 2, wherein we are seeing no much change in the membrane potential, it almost, almost remains static and that is called as the plateau phase. That is what is called as the plateau phase and then we have the phase 3 which is the proper repolarization phase. Okay. So, basically we are having four phases. Phase 0 is the phase of rapid depolarization. Phase 1 is initial rapid repolarization. Phase 2 is a plateau phase and phase 3 is the phase of repolarization. Okay. So, let us uh, try and understand the ionic basis of all these different phases. Okay. What happens during phase 0 is that during phase 0, there is opening of sodium channels. Okay. The sodium channels are going to open and when sodium channels, what type of sodium channels are these? These are nothing but voltage gated sodium channels. So, when there is opening of the sodium channels, there is going to be a sodium influx. So, the cell is going to undergo a rapid depolarization. And then it is going to have a small overshoot. Overshoot is the one which is occurring above the zero level. Okay, that is what is called as a overshoot, and it almost touches plus 20 millivolts. Once it touches the plus 20 millivolts, these voltage gated sodium channels they are going to close, and there is an opening and closing of potassium channels. Potassium channels open rapidly and then they close rapidly. Now, the rapid opening and closing of the potassium channels is going to cause potassium efflux for a very short duration of time. And this potassium efflux is the one which is responsible for initial rapid repolarization phase. After that, what is going to happen is that 
there is opening of two channels. One is called as L-type calcium channels. There is opening of L-type calcium channels. This is causing calcium influx. And there is also opening of one more type of potassium channel, which is called as delayed rectifier potassium channels. And this is causing potassium efflux. So what is happening in the phase two is that there is calcium influx is also happening and there is potassium efflux is also happening. So the calcium influx is balanced by the potassium efflux because both are positive ions. The number of positive ions entering inside the cell will be almost equal to the number of positive ions which is leaving the cell. This is what is resulting in no much change in the membrane potential. Hence, this phase is what is called as the plateau phase. Now, after this phase, there is a last phase, which is the phase of repolarization. What is happening in the phase of repolarization is that the L-type calcium channels, which had opened during the second phase, now they are going to close off. Now there is open, now there is only one channel which is open and that is the delayed rectifier potassium channels. And this delayed rectifier potassium channels which had opened during the phase 2, they are called as slow delayed rectifier potassium channels and the potassium efflux is very slow. Now once there is closure of the L-type calcium channels, there is also opening of one more type of potassium channel which is called as rapid delayed rectifier potassium channels. So opening of the rapid delayed rectifier potassium channels is going to cause profound efflux of the potassium from inside the cell. So when a positive ion from inside the cell goes out, that results in the fall in the membrane potential and that is what is causing the last phase which is the phase of repolarization. And once the membrane potential is going to touch the resting membrane potential, even these potassium channels which had opened, they are also going to close, leading to the resting membrane potential. Okay, so let's just revise what we have studied till now. Phase 0 is a phase of rapid depolarization. Why does phase 0 occurs? It occurs because of rapid opening of the sodium channels resulting in sodium influx. Next, we have phase 1. Phase 1 is this phase, as you are seeing here in the diagram, this is the phase 1, this is phase 2 and this is the phase 3 and this one is the phase 0. Now phase 1 is initial rapid repolarization, two things occur here, the sodium channels which were opened during the rapid depolarization phase, they are going to rapidly close, so the sodium influx is going to stop. Second thing is, there is rapid opening and closure of the potassium channels. So potassium channels open and close. This is going to cause a brief potassium efflux resulting in initial rapid repolarization. Then comes the phase 2. What is going to happen here? There is opening of the L-type calcium channels. So calcium influx begins. Okay, calcium influx is going to begin. And then there is opening of one more type of potassium channel which is called as slow delayed rectifier potassium channels. So what is happening here? One positive ion is moving in and another positive ion is moving out. So there is a balance and hence there is no much change in the membrane potential resulting in a plateau phase. Next what is going to happen is there is a phase 3, the last phase which is called as the slow repolarization phase. The L-type calcium channels which were opened during the phase 2, they are going to close. Calcium influx is going to stop. Next what is going to happen? There is slow delayed rectifier potassium channels are going to remain open that is going to cause potassium efflux. This potassium efflux again it is going to cause opening of one more type of potassium channels which is called as rapid delayed rectifier potassium channels and this is what is going to cause profound efflux of potassium from the cell that is resulting in slow repolarization phase. So it's as easy as this, okay? So if I hope you have understood this video, fine. So thank you for watching this video. Like this video, share this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. See you again.